This podcast is brought to you by the Careers team at Urban Company, Asia's largest platform for home services. We bring beauty, cleaning, repair and home improvement services right to your doorstep. Hello and welcome to the Urban Company podcast. My name is Abhiraj Singh Bhal and I am the founder and CEO of Urban Company. In today's podcast, we have three very interesting team members from Urban Company. We have Arushi Arora, who is a vice president with the company and had joined us as an entrepreneur in residence uh, almost four years back. We have Asta Agarwal, uh, who is a uh, AVP with the company and had joined us as an EIR about two and a half years back. Uh, and we have Farah uh, from our uh, Saudi Arabia office, who had joined us as an EIR about a year back. Uh, in this podcast, we will uh, hear their stories, uh, talk about their experiences both prior to joining Urban Company as well as uh, at Urban Company, and also deep dive into the role of the Entrepreneur in Residence program uh, at Urban Company. Uh, and in case you are looking uh, at joining this program or considering this program or looking to apply to Urban Company for this particular role or any other role, uh, this should be a very interesting podcast. Uh, for you all to listen. So up front, Arushi, Asta and Farah, thank you so much for taking time out. I'm going to start with you, Arushi. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, yourself. Tell us about, uh, you know, where you grew up, early days and, and your life before you joined Urban Company. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Abhiraj. Um, so, uh, j- starting from, uh, you know, I, I was born and brought up in Delhi NCR. I've been here all my life. Come from a doctor family. Both my parents are doctors. Uh, so, right from the beginning, there was too much pressure on me from an academics point of view. So, I've always been very, very studious in school. I was always like the class topper uh, throughout school. And that's what extended to like when I was in 10th. Um, I u- used to be great across subjects, especially in math. And that's what pushed my family to push me into trying out for IIT. Um, and, you know, I got the support from them and a few teachers at school. And uh, luckily got through when it was a big deal. Like I was the first engineer in my family as well. So um, got a good rank at uh, JE that got into IIT Delhi, uh, took up chemical engineering there. Um, at IIT, of course, first time I got a chance to try out other things because there was not too much academic pressure. It was the first time I was staying away from home, not too away because it was still Delhi NCR, but still got some bit of freedom to uh, do a few things, try out a few things there. Um, so yeah, it was a five-year journey full of fun at IIT. Um, when when placement time came, again, I think um, uh, the dream job for everybody in IIT used to be consulting. And that's what I thought, let me also give it a shot and see if I can get through. There was this whole six to eight month journey of prepping for the case interviews. We were just day in, day out doing business cases, which in hindsight simplified things a bit too much. but. Uh, but that's what I did and then uh, luckily got through BCG uh, on the first day. Joined BCG in 2013, that's when I graduated. Um, BCG was of course the best job that you can ask for right out of college, especially as an undergrad. It was just amazing learning, like some of the smartest people that you can work with and some of the biggest clients, biggest names in India that you were getting to interact with and the problem statements that you were working on. Uh, were like could create a lot of impact in really large businesses. Uh, so that gave, gave me a great exposure to different industries, different kind of problems that we were solving, worked across strategy projects as well as implementation projects, even got a chance to work on some social impact, which I loved. Um, did a bit of digital right at the end, which is when things in digital were kicking off. Uh, so I spent a good five years there. Um, before I uh, moved on and joined Urban Company in 2018. Um, Yeah, so that's about me. Uh, Yeah. Thanks, Arushi. I'm going to come back to you um, and also discuss like why you chose to join Urban Company and why you didn't go for an MBA, which is typically the route for, you know, uh, folks who join consulting after undergrad. But but I'm going to go to Asta now. Asta, uh, unlike Arushi and me, you're a non-engineer. So tell us your story. What's What's been your story prior to joining Urban Company? Cool. Uh, Thanks, Abhirat. So I am actually based out of Assam. So my folks are from Assam. 
Um, however, I kind of moved out of home very early. So I went to a boarding school when I was about nine, and I was in Rajasthan. So I went to Mayo Girls, which is in Ajmer. Um, was there till about you know the twelfth grade. What actually happened is you know I was also pretty studious and into academics, and then post tenth grade, you know what is the natural route? You take up science, and I'm like I'm going to become an engineer. So took up science. Um, midway into like eleventh grade, I think I realized that. this is not going to happen i don't think i'm going to make the cut so i might as well take up another subject that i can probably like go to du with etc so along with physics chem math I actually then opted for economics um because i was like you know this might be an easier route uh, to kind of deal with because i can't do or i possibly can't crack uh, the iit while being in a boarding school you know cuz you don't have too much of like outside tutoring etc so I think took up economics. Lots of distractions. Yeah, a lot of distractions. I mean, you're like staying in dormitories with people. I mean, that's not that's not going to happen. So yeah, it was very clear that uh, engineering isn't happening. Um, so yeah, then after twelve, um, I think economics was the only choice pretty much that I had, and I got into um, the Sri Ram College of Commerce for economics. So joined there, moved to Delhi. Um, that was freedom at its peak i mean i hadn't experienced that kind of freedom before uh, after getting out of boarding school so i think 3 years in du were pretty much just like a lot of fun and parties to be very honest um however in the third year i think you start thinking about you know what next and in srcc everyone is like you know like arshi said right it's consulting is the dream job so yeah i mean i was like you know i have to get into like a mckinsey or like at kani those were the two companies that came to our campus at both the times and yeah i bombed both those interviews so got shortlisted but didn't make it and then obviously what is the natural path for somebody which is hey i'm going to do an mba um so yeah i think that's when i started preparing for cat i i mean i kind of interviewed with a bunch of iams and then when i am amdabad happened i think it was pretty much a no brainer um that i'm going to go there uh, that, i mean it was almost like a dream come true at that point in time um my family is far away from academics we're from a business family they i mean i i don't think they could believe it for a really long time that um somebody made it into an iim because you know nobody does academics um uh, there so yeah and then i joined the ima was there for about 2 years during summer placement like i said i still wanted to get into consulting um interviewed with a bunch of firms and got into bain was at bain for about one and a half years uh primarily worked on uh, cpg which is like consumer products um so a lot of interesting clients it was also something that i realized that i really enjoyed doing user side or like b2c kind of roles um yeah and then i joined urban company in 2020 like right before the pandemic so yeah that that's that's about it thanks asta i think <clears throat> the common uh, theme between the two of us is we went straight to i am in the bath from our undergraduate uh, colleges except that i didn't even get shortlisted for any of the consults that showed up at my undergraduate college so i had literally no choice but uh, but uh, you know farah you have a very interesting story unlike the three of us who grew up in india and uh, went to colleges in india you have a slightly different story so tell us your story I was born in Mumbai but uh, ever since the age of 3 I then moved to the Middle East so I've grown up in Qatar I've done my education there um as a child so my so when I was very young right my mom would look at me and say I want her to be a brain surgeon um she didn't she couldn't be a doctor but she wanted me to be one as a typical you know indian fa- parent and somewhere down the line right when I was really young I was I was I would not write I was very stubborn in my ways. Um so my mom would look at me and be like brain surgeon is out of question, right? She's not even writing and reading properly. But as I grew up, I sort of started enjoying responsibility. Um I you know finished my high school from DPS and then sort of went to Carnegie Mellon for my education in business. And I fell in love with business. I fell in love with you know understanding how different companies work and After that I joined consulting. Um the primary objective for me to join consulting was getting to work with as I think Arush has already mentioned the smartest people and, and work on diverse problems across the board. So I've worked in projects from aerospace and defense to uh, hospitality to healthcare across across the board. I worked for Carney for 3 years uh, in Dubai and Oman as well as in Saudi. 
and after that stint, I decided to join Urban Bank. Just a year back. So that's a, a really fascinating story for us. Thank you for sharing, Arshi. I'm going to come to you. You know, five years into BCG after undergrad, typically, you know, people will be thinking about business school, going, you know, overseas, uh, and getting themselves an MBA. Why did you choose? urban company at that time yeah so before that interestingly i had also given my cat back in iit because the cat exam used to be before placements and i wasn't sure where i'm going to land up so i did give my cat i got a good percentile i had bangalore and lucknow calls as well uh, but then got into bcg and then spoke to a bunch of people and ended up deciding that even if i were to go for an mba this is where i will land um, so let's just kind of you know get there Uh, already um, so then bcg happened i think not even 5 years 3 years in most of the people who had joined with me um moved either to the us or to a pe vc uh, with that same thought process of getting into a b school in the us for me personally i think there were two key reasons uh, one is more personal one is professional i think personally i did not want to be away from family so i always wanted to be in india um and uh, i wasn't sure if just going there for an mba uh, would be the right thing to do it's of course also fairly expensive to go to an mba there uh, and then if you're planning to come back uh, i wasn't sure if it made a lot of sense and hence you know that one was a personal choice on the professional front in bcg for example i never felt like there was any difference in the opportunities that i got as an mba or a non mba like after the first one year the paths were exactly the same your Uh, entire and now finally you know there are partners in the india ecosystem who are not mbas and this had already started to happen back then where my role my the kind of work i was doing the kind of exposure i was getting had nothing to do with my uh, degree uh, and that's what i could see in the surrounding ecosystem as well like i felt genuinely could not think of any opportunity that i would want to take up which would be contingent on me having an mba and that's again what i've seen at urban company as well Uh, so you know those two things put together i think now anyways it's too late for me to even think about it but that's what's kind of uh, kept me away from an mba overall so i think overall opportunities have been fantastic without that unless you want to go into a very traditional kind of an organization i don't think in india now it matters too much and uh, personally also it just allowed me to be closer to family uh, which is what i wanted to do why urban company out of bcg i think uh, there were three paths that people took mba i spoke about the other one was moving to a pe or a vc um which again to me sounded similar to consulting like the main reason i wanted to move out of consulting was because i didn't feel like i could create a lot of impact there uh and that's something that i again felt that may not happen at a pe or a vc And, and hence you know that's something that i did not want to pursue as well uh an urban company just gave me that like the instant i you know there was when i met all of you on a day i just was super uh, intrigued by the kind of work that we were doing here and the kind of impact that i would get a chance to create and uh, it it was it became an obvious choice after the first few interactions uh, with the people here of course the startup ecosystem was very different like it was there were maybe Five ten unicorns at that time, which today is like hundred plus. The urban company while was valued at about two hundred million uh, that time when I had joined. So it wasn't the obvious choice for a lot of other people, but for me because I just wanted to do something where I could do real work, create impact, wo- while also being able to work with a set of smart people. And both those boxes were ticked for me when I came here and um, got to know about the role, got to meet a bunch of people, and yeah, that's when I decided to uh, join. Very helpful. Thanks, thanks, Arushi. Asa, coming to you. So you know, you're one and a half years into Bain. You made up yeah. your mind. You want to move out on now. You want to join. You know, probably something in the startup ecosystem. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there's like a bunch of different companies that you are evaluating and talking to at that time, right? It's not just urban company. So tell us that what what was you know what was that journey like in deciding to move out of consulting into the startup ecosystem without taking names like you know how many companies do you need? What was your thought process? How did you zero in on urban company? So basically, I'm back. I mean, this is like one and a half years back, and back in 2019, like like late 2019 of sorts, and I'm like. 
um, doing doing like a travel case and I'm like, you know, I am done with this. I'm not liking the work. Neither am I like liking the, you know, work life, um, you know, outside. So, you know, maybe I should move on. So I think two decision points. I think first I decided that, you know, consulting isn't the career where I see myself growing. I don't find, um, you know, the roles or the projects done by Senior Up as exciting as I thought while I was joining it, right? So I think that was the first decision point where I think I got conviction that I want to move out. And I think then it was almost like the next two, three months, almost from October to like January, where I was figuring out where I wanted to go next. Because at that point, it seemed like, you know, the make or break decision in my life, right? So um, I possibly talked to, a, forget startup, like I think I spoke to every traditional company, every like small company, like any and every option, right? Like from like social organizations, because I was like, I didn't really know what people could do outside of consulting, right? So that role wasn't real for me because I hadn't worked the MBA. So first I was trying to figure out the different sectors. So speaking to a bunch of companies across different sectors. And I think then I kind of got clarity. Key, no, you know, I want to get into like the startup ecosystem. The work seems um, fairly interesting. The problem statements are very real. Um, and therefore, like Arushi was saying, we'll get to make, do real work and see real impact, right? And also work with a really smart, um, you know, peer group in that sense. Once I kind of shortlisted that I wanted to get into the start startup ecosystem, I think there were a lot of startups that I was talking to at that point in time. I think about two or three conversations I've had with about five to seven startups at that point in time. Um, across like, you know, some, I mean, very few early stage, to be honest, most uh, mid-stage slash late stage in that sense. And then what happened is that I was based out of Gurgaon at that point in time. And I happened to kind of know a lot of friends in urban company at that point in time. Um, so I think, and they all had ravishing reviews in that sense, right? So it's, for me, it was very strange that somebody is so happy at their workplace, like they're not cribbing or ranting about it. And I'm like, wow, like this is amazing. So that kind of pushed me to kind of take the conversations with urban company, you know, a level further. I kind of spent one day in office. So I came down on a weekend. Um, there were a bunch of people in office just, and I think, that kind of sealed the deal for me to be very honest, right? I think that one day while I was in office on a Saturday, I was like, you know, you know, I mean, I want to get like done early. I, I probably wrap up, you know, it's a weekend. I want to grab lunch. And I think I ended up spending almost the entire day because it was just, it was fun. I mean, I was having just fun conversations with people and, and you know, it just felt like, oh, you know, I could be here. I'm not, I'm not going to be a misfit. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to love working here, right? So I think for me, at least that one day, by luck because I was based out of Gurgaon and I could do it and it was pre-pandemic uh, but for me that kind of sealed the deal so I met like a bunch of folks some people who were EIRs at that point in time I met Mukund who was the SVP at that point in time and I was like okay like this seems like pretty uh, you know surreal in that sense right it seems too good to be true so yeah at least for me I think that one day and then I was pretty sure and then I think I kind of just put in my papers and then joined Urban Gang you know, a month later so yeah Amazing. Amazing. I'll come back and ask you if it was too good to be true or not. <laughs> uh, Farah, uh, you joined us in the, like bang in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, tell us like what your interview experience was like. How did you make the decision? You probably did not meet people physically. Uh, I don't know if you did, but tell us what that whole uh, decision making process was like. So I was very clear that I didn't want to spend a lot more time in consulting and I was actually thinking with a bunch of my other friends to apply for an MBA program so that I can then join or you know change my path. Um, and for me, I, I didn't know that an EIR role is you know something that you can do even without an MBA. So when I was sort of reached out and I read you know the, the, the role that I wanted to interview for, I felt like this is something that is usually done only after an MBA but that's not at all true and I think for me that decision spanned across one entire month the people that I got to interact with were very patient and answered questions I met with them as well it's it's not like I just saw them over zoom or skype I did my interview and then I took a lot of time just going back and forth with my manager to get a feel of what is it that you know work would be like at urban company and any time I called him, he was always willing to answer, be very patient and, and, you know, walk me through whatever is it that 
I needed uh, clarity on. And I think during, so I had two interviews. One was with the country head um, of KSA, and the other was with one of the other co-founders, Varun. And um, during my second interview, I sort of hinted right that the role that I'm being uh, interviewing for is more or less a very comprehensive role. It was for setting up the entire beauty vertical at KSA. Um, and Varun at that point said that it's we look forward to working with younger folks and giving them a lot more opportunity than traditional companies or even startups at this day and age would, you know, trust younger folks with. And I was told that no matter what, you will get all the sort of resources that you need. You will get a lot of help along the way to make sure that you have everything you need to succeed in that role. And that is entirely true. Um, I, I will not lie, the first one week was very overwhelming because it's a lot to comprehend. But after that, it was just like the journey itself was smooth. I enjoyed every bit of it. The thing that I really so far have enjoyed about working with Urban Company has been how comprehensive the role is. So in my previous role at Carney, I did a lot of strategy, right? Which is making docs and then sending it to your clients and then just seeing impact maybe three months or one year down the line. Over here, it's not like that. So you decide what is it that you want to do. You do it yourself. You're responsible for the execution. So it's end to end ownership. And then you see the results either next day or next week. right? So it's literally that thrilling. It's more. So I was told that consulting is a roller coaster ride. This one is a more fun one because every day you get to do different things and see impact literally very soon. Got it. Super helpful. Super helpful for us. Arshi, coming to you, you've, you know, you've seen, uh, you know, you see from 2018, uh, I think June it was when you joined us to today, you know, uh, more than four years later, you've also grown, uh, you know, starting off as an EIR, you became an AVP business head, now you're a VP, you've managed different pieces of, of our businesses uh, at different stages of evolution. So te- tell us what your journey has been like, what has uh, you know, how did it start out and how was each year different for you uh, across these four years? So uh, when I joined, I think the role was, um, I I had joined to lead the SPA category at that point in time. It was a very small category when at that point in time, just launched, like I think six months back. Uh, when I had, you know, decided to join to lead SPA, in my head, it was like a very glamorous picture. Like when you think SPA, you think like a five-star hotel and, you know, that those are the kind of things that I would think, oh, how can I make my offering like that? And, you know, we can do tie-ups with corporates and this and that. And, you know, th- those are the things I was thinking in the run-up to my joining here. But when I joined, it just turned out to be the complete opposite. Like it was like not glamorous at all to say the least it was just very very real right because uh, so when i joined i think we were in a phase where we it launched it uh, out of gut conviction let's see what happens it's something that's not accessible to people at home so let's see if we are if we were to offer this service what happens and i remember we saw just unprecedented traction and demand for that service which we had not expected it, it turned out to be like a latent need which we just kind of found um, and then the idea was just to create enough supply or like partner base to be able to capture that demand. So all the thoughts I had around, you know, offering was just parked and the six, first six months here were just about finding the right set of service professionals to cater to that demand. So I remember traveling to the Northeast to find out institutes from where we could possibly get partners to join us. I remember one of the key reasons people did not want to join us is because uh, they had to carry this bed which was our main differentiator right that we will get a spa bed to your house and give you that service and I remember people saying it's too heavy and we can't join because it's too difficult for us to carry so we spent two months finding a bed that was lighter so I remember myself getting 10 samples from China and then kind of jumping on it to see which is sturdy enough and light enough so it just uh, it became very real when I joined. So like that was my first six months, very real, like very different from what I would have imagined. Um, but at the end of those six months, business had already grown like three times from when I had joined. And uh, it was just amazing. Like the kind of fulfillment that you get by just you put in all that effort and then it kind of culminated in the kind of growth that you would not imagined. And that was my first stint and really set me up to take up 
broader role like so this first one was very very focused on building supply that was one part of a big larger business but that was the need of the hour uh, which we needed to do once i did this then i moved to a broader role where we have to launch men's grooming uh, which is the first time we were uh, starting a beauty category for men we never had any personal care offering for men and uh, that was the thought process that you know there are enough men on the platform trying out different services let's get them to try out hair cut and salon services as well so that was my next one year where this one was a much tougher role we had to figure out right from scratch what is the right offering what is the right pricing what is the right uh, partner base and how do we get this offering to get to product market fit so it was almost like a 0 to 1 kind of a build that we did for about a year similar experiences but much broader i had a larger team this time to work with so we could work on pricing offering at the same time as building supply and that's how my role kind of evolved from the first one to this one but did not get any less real i would still be on the ground figuring out the right mirror for the haircut the right chair for the haircut the right cape um, you know and we would be visiting salons trying to understand pricing etc so at the heart of it it continued to be finding the best thing to make the service better for the customer and better for the partner while my mandate became broader um so that was the second year here the third year here for me was then moving on to salon for women where we were launching a new tier of services so we always had a mass premium category uh, what we wanted to do is unlock a uh, lower pricing to drive much higher penetration of the market so for that we had uh, we picked and launched a new tier think of it as an uber like an uber go and an uber prime so we we were launching the uber go version of salon uh, and that's what my mandate was for one and a half years after that it was a very similar zero to one journey but i had so many learnings from my first time that it just helped helped me get a lot faster in this journey and we were able to really scale up much faster this time and we got from zero deliveries to 100000 deliveries in a span of one and a half years and that was a massive journey for me this was the first time because the category was seeing product market fit we were seeing tailwinds i also got a chance to build a large team to uh, hire strong people to groom them uh so that you know they could take over as i moved on so i think this was also my first time at learning leadership and how to build a team coach a team and get them to do well as well and then just recently moved to the uh cleaning team uh which is you know it's just been 6 months so still learning here and mandate is of course larger because there are multiple sub categories now uh within that uh overview of cleaning so that that's how my role has evolved but at the heart of it i think we never stop thinking about how to make the service better that's that's what we do every single day whether it's for the partner whether it's for the customer but then that, that that's the only thing that you do and then that typically will will get you impact on both sides and that's what kept me going in the last 4 years absolutely no i think very well put the whole journey from sort of i think when you took up spa it was really small you saw that to a point men's grooming you know you pretty much see to that category classic you were able to see so long classic the longer journey now of course the challenge is very different where cleaning is like a half a million orders category come october this year and then you have to you know grow it to maybe 2 3 million over the next couple of years and that's that has its own set of you know challenges unique to it i mean 3 years back all of urban company was half a million order so i can sort of see that different phases of the of, of your journey at at uc as the coming to you you know you you started off with men's grooming right you took over men's grooming in the pandemic is is that correct or we doing yeah i mean on? i did like a short stint before that in like salon for about 3 months but yeah majorly men's grooming men's grooming and this category was like really on fire during the pandemic tell us about like that experience and and also your more, your more recent experience back in salon so like i said i joined urban company in about february and the initial 2 3 months i was in salon so salon for women i was basically leading the um roll on so you know as a lot of you must have seen we launched the roll on uh, the waxing roll on at that point in time and that's the project that i was leading for about 3 months right so understanding if it actually makes the experience uh better for women right because 
waxing had traditionally always been done by the tin wax so does it make it better for the user does it make it better for the partner what more can we do in this direction right so i think that's the first kind of problem statement that i was owning in the first 3 months when i joined up in company and i think i remember shadowing partners i mean i was standing when you know partners are like giving the roll on services to the user and i'm like you know like is this weird that i'm like you know seeing somebody else get waxed and then i realized that's the most real form of learning like arishi was saying right because that's when the user would really tell you what they felt about your offering what you could do better etc so first 3 months was actually more about that right like a uh, meeting with a lot of partners speaking with a lot of partners users etc with a focus to really understand you know whether roll on was bringing out the benefits that we intended for it to do and what could be the next kind of disruption in the waxing space which has always been traditionally done a certain way right but you know obviously then the pandemic hit and you know the beauty business kind of slowed down and at that point in time i moved into men's clothing which was seeing massive tailwinds right i mean uh everybody or every man wanted to like get a haircut that's something that they couldn't live without and they couldn't step to the salons so the next 3 to 4 months for me was at, you know about supply building like arishi said right I, i mean i had never done that had absolutely no idea of it so it was really overwhelming i think uh in the first initial month or so but i think really trying to see how can we onboard uh you know hair stylists onto our platform who would and we would i mean if i have to give you like some numbers i mean we were onboarding about 50 to 100 professionals a month and you know we suddenly had to kind of ramp that up 10x to like 1000 professionals a month right and i'm like you know how difficult can this be honestly like i think everything was different right it was pandemic we'd always been doing offline training we suddenly had to pivot to doing i mean we'd always been doing physical training so we had to like pivot to doing online trainings trying to figure databases etc so i think the next um kind of 5 6 months were really getting a hang of like supply building and like really how do you kind of keep the team morale and motivation there when you're trying to go through like a tough time right i think that's when i really like even if i look back i think that's when i really saw the team come around i mean that's probably my fondest uh, memory at uc but i think everybody kind of got together and we were rallying for like one common goal you know like everybody was helping each other i was relatively new and i don't think i have seen or i expected that kind of a support system when everybody was so slammed at their work themselves for instance right so yeah i think that was about the next 6 months um post which i kind of moved on to take up within men's grooming a different role um so like i'd seen the supply building side of it i was now kind of taking up the problem statement of thinking more from a portfolio pricing innovation standpoint what could we really do to make uh you know the service differentiated in that sense right so that's the problem statement that i kind of worked on for about the next one year um in this process also launched um you know like a luxury tier of men salon because we realized that you know there were men who wanted a more premium service for instance so that's the next one year um with a very focused kind of problem statement but also broad enough for me to really explore you know what new you know kind of sqs that we can offer what are the pricing points that we should play with different kind of innovations etc right and this is both on the partner and the user side right so thinking about like unbreakable mirror etc and i think then the last 6 months or so have i kind of transitioned into a new role uh where i was actually leading uh you know the salon for women the lux category and the women's hair category so um a step a significant step jump in the mandate in that sense right because i was owning or i'm owning two categories end to end which means a much larger team you know kind of multiple different problem statements even conflicting problem statements at times to solve for um so that's that's broadly been the last 6 months i mean i don't think i could have ever imagined like leading such a large team of like 40 50 people but honestly like it it kind of seemed like a natural transition with how my journey had been right because i kind of already experienced different problem statements and i was now kind of putting it all together pretty much so um uh, wasn't so much of a shocker but definitely the last 6 months have been um lot of learning in terms of you know how to build the right team how to kind of build the right leverage for the team and at the same time how to kind of think about the overall road map of an entire category right so um that's kind of been my journey here 
for i'll come I'll, i'll come to you in a bit but i just want to double click on one thing you said two and a half years back at consulting you were leading zero people i'm guessing yeah. you know now you're leading like 40 50 people what have you learned about leadership like you know this is not like this is not it's not like you've taken 10 years to kind of grow into that role it's been a very short duration right two two and a half years you were expected yeah. to lead 40 50 people you know each of these individuals is very driven in sector so what have you really learned about yourself about leadership in the process got it um so maybe i'll put this in three key learnings that at least i have had over the last um two two and a half years right i think one is that you don't need to kind of tell people what to do i think um once you kind of give them an overall goal giving people the space to figure out what they want to kind of work on right i think that was very different as soon as i came i i remember when i had one category manager and i would be up his ass i would be like hey have you done these tasks you know these are like five tasks that you're supposed to do and like you know we should have like a daily catch up on like how you're doing so i think um just giving that space and trust to the people that you're kind of working with because i think the one key shift was that i kind of stopped doubting intention probably i would assume that everybody has the right intention to work and i don't need to kind of keep checking whether something is getting done or not once i think people are kind of aligned um on a goal and the importance of that goal so i think that was the first right the second was that i think people need to know that you have their back i kind of underestimated that initially i would you know any time i kind of moved into a new team i would be like okay let's just get to work i don't think i would invest that time to really understand you know what was the stage that the person was in you know or or kind of building that personal rapport that made it a safe space for that person to come in the most effective way for me in the last few is kind of just having people know that you have their back um and that kind of just makes working so much less stressful and so much more fun that was the second um and third i think has been a little bit more personal in that sense where i feel like i have kind of passed on the stress that i would get um and then i kind of started realizing how important it is for me to kind of step back from time to time and like really you know like what is it that i want to kind of communicate to the team versus not so i think i was a very hyper person and i was like hey you know i i constantly have to be at something which has kind of changed like i i i now kind of take time to step back just think you know like what is it when is it that i want to kind of i mean you can't keep putting stress on people to do things that never gets you the outcomes right which wasn't the case i'm like do this do this do this let's do this by tomorrow let's do this day after and i think that's that's kind of changed in the process so yeah yeah reflecting on your long career in leadership <laughs> all the leadership lessons there is yeah <laughs> no really helpful really helpful asta farah uh you know you you were like sort of parachuted into into riyadh to build our beauty business in in the kingdom um there was no business there wasn't even a company like in in the kingdom of saudi arabia before you joined tell us what the last one year um one year has been and by the way just you know for the folks listening i was recently at riyadh like visited riyadh and uh, and how much some of our our partner organizations in the beauty space their value us uh for them like you know i was in material it was all fara right oh fara has done this fara has done that fara has a dedicated office in one of our partner organizations where she sits out of uh she doesn't sit out of our office uh so tell us for what the last one year has been like uh, building building our beauty business in the kingdom of saudi arabia yeah so first i started off by just understanding whether there is a market there um understanding what sort of services women really want um at what price points um whether they take it at home or not so that was i think the initial phase of mine and then when i moved to saudi the first month and a half was just to understand from where do i get supply i think it all starts from from supply building right um and i visited i think over 50 salons uh to understand whether they're interested or not um and initially it was just heartbreaking because everyone would say we'll get back to you and i would not get any phone calls um but i think just constantly going back to one of the major salons in riyadh 
and you know sort of explaining to them making sure that they don't have any questions on their end later down the line 1.5 months later i did get interest right and this the salon that we have tied up with they are the, the leading salon in riyadh the biggest one with around 250 beauticians so that for me was one of the best moments because from that point onwards i knew games on because now i have you know supply i can now mold and shape the business as as and how i wanted it um we started off with you know manicure pedicure and all the sort of core services that women get um and then i moved to the next phase which was making sure that you know urban company provides services that are of the highest quality and when people take urban company services they don't go back to any of the other home service providers or go back to the salon for that matter so then the next phase was making sure that we were training really well um and as i think arushi and asa have already already touched upon making sure that we're really different be it through offering you know wider range of nail nail paints be it through doing something completely different making sure the overall service is more relaxing whatever is the differentiator focusing on that making sure it's really valuable to customers so that for me was phase 2 um and then phase 3 was once people started coming on to our application making sure that they actually book the service so working on a very important phase which was conversion um so a lot of the times people would come on our application and then look at the services and then just drop off um but making sure that they actually complete the funnel and place an order because once they did place an order to a service we we saw that they came back because they realized that our service was that different unique um and and so from that point onwards that was my you know next most important thing now i'm looking at scaling um or launching different categories like hair i'm looking at launching uh, lashes or nail extensions which also is a very big market um and now i have a team together in place of you know category managers and trainers uh for me as well this has been an experience where i've not had a chance to lead a team before not even a single person so having a, a team in place and making sure that you know um they are motivated across the entire uh, journey and getting work done is something that is very fulfilling for me as well yeah. awesome shifting gears you know i i, I want to now and and we we'll do it in slightly rapid fire style so i want to talk a little bit about uc culture uh you know which all of us take great pride in uh and uh, you know we feel we've created a really differentiated culture but also one of the things about our culture is that we're fairly transparent and we recognize where we're not good at as well um you know so so what we'll do is we'll talk about two things that each of you like about the culture that you see maybe one thing that you you know don't like or let's rephrase it. let's rephrase it to say think one thing we can improve upon right uh, we don't want to be that on the stuff so <laughs> no just kidding so you know a couple of things you guys like uh, one thing that you don't like or we can improve upon um yeah would would love to to get your thoughts on that starting with you arshi yeah uh, i think two things i like about the culture here clearly for me are one is just outcome orientation so like the beauty about the business is that it's a multi category multi geography business so hence each of us from the very beginning get a chance to be like a mini ceo uh, right so of each of our own you know small businesses or geographies right and that just gives you that uh, super like ownership of the outcome that you have to move and that's one thing that is that just stands out about you see for me um the other one is that we move fast like the common theme in both mine and asta's cases the reason we've changed so many roles is because there was a larger mandate that we could potentially take up even though we were not ready for it we were put into that role that you know you you know we feel you're ready and you will get there um right so that's the other thing in terms of just giving people opportunities uh larger than what they might have done earlier just because you feel like they can uh you know they can do it and that that sort of pushes you to do even better than what you would have imagined yourself being able to do um i think those two things are uh, things that are good um in terms of what you know what could be better i think um just uh, sometimes the first thing which is you know outcome orientation or ownership of numbers it also does lead to stress 
like it can be overwhelming at times because many times you don't have all the answers and it's hard to switch off like uh, you know unlike in consulting you're owning the business here you know there there will be days when it's not going as you would have imagined it to be and you can be really stressed about it and i think those are things that you know come with the positives uh, and that's something i think it will continue to happen but maybe how do you deal with it better how do you still figure out time for yourself you figure out those things that help you switch off and the same thing you will have to do for your teams as well because many times teams are working very very hard stretching a lot so how do you kind of balance it out a bit and uh, uh, keep them going so that you know there's no burnout uh, i think that would be one kind of balance that i'm yet to figure out and i think i see that in multiple teams got it also same question for you yeah cool so i think uh, two things which i absolutely love i think first is just i think intellectual honesty right i think it doesn't matter who you are in the room there is if you have a point of view that you believe in or an answer that you think is right i think um you can really just say it to anybody and i think those discussions and brainstorming sessions are um uh, very focused on what is the right answer right versus who is saying that answer what is happening what will not happen if i say this right and i think uh um, just being able to have that debate without really being conscious about these factors i think was very liberating for me and i think continues to be very liberating for me i think that's one second in general i think um we have a very strong bias to kind of reward risk to some extent i am a very risk averse individual and therefore i think i would have continued on the safest path possible but i think time and again over the last two and a half years i've been encouraged and pushed to take risks right doesn't mean that it always has to be successful but i think if you're kind of bold enough if you want to try something there is always that space and support system right you'll never hear a no for something that seems crazy or outrageous right and i'm like um so i think i'm kind of now borderline like risk neutral um to some extent so i think those two things are absolutely amazing um i think one thing that we can probably work on i think is maybe a little bit more of cross functional interaction and cross functional kind of collaboration to some extent i feel like accelerated by the pandemic a little bit but i feel like currently you know if you have to talk about like the business teams or like the product team or the market teams were a little bit siloed in you know how we currently work uh you know i think the goal setting is kind of done separately and you know obviously there are some projects that we kind of collaborate on um which is obviously the need but i feel like that could be a lot more um in the future right so that's probably one thing that i think we probably need to work on as an organization excellent point also and I, it's something that i really think about a lot because you know marketplaces are unique they have you know one of the challenges with a marketplace business is you cannot you know it's not very straightforward to just um delineate the metrics and say you're responsible for this you're yeah. responsible for this you're responsible for this because there's so much interdependency and then there's always the struggle of you know how do you bring cross functional teams together to work together at the same time how do you create enough responsibility that each person has ownership right and not so there's a very like it's a very deep point you made because there's a there's a tension there uh which i think we will have to you know um think about more deeply and solve for um uh, farah two things you like about uc and maybe one or two things you don't like about uc so for me the first thing is you know how collaborative everyone really is over here uh across different points in my journey i've interacted with jeremy who's the head of beauty in singapore lauren who's a marketing lead in australia um mukund who is like the uh, chief business officer um and everyone has you know given me enough time making sure that whatever i wanted to discuss with them and get guidance on i i've received that um it's it, and i think that's really comforting because having people who have a lot more experience in different areas and getting their inputs so you are also growing and you have that sort of support system already built um so collaborative environment i think is one of the strongest um that i've seen um in uc and um i think the second is giving giving people space to sort of 
own things end to end right so ownership and over here so i have i've proposed ideas and my manager said yep go ahead try it out if it fails no no problem if it doesn't that's that's amazing and even if there are ideas that that let's say people are not fully on board with getting their support and input and making sure that it's more doable or more scalable um just giving you that space to experiment and explore um rather than having sort of rigid frameworks within which one or a team operates um i think that has been really rewarding so those are the two things one is collaboration and ownership and the second is ownership um i think with regards to improvement um i i'm not sure if it's a culture thing or if it's just something that maybe is within me but i am obsessed with the metrics right so even on vacation i would be the one opening and saying okay what's our average rating what's our nps um but i i think that's just because you know you as i think arush has already mentioned you are a mini ceo and you, you own that entire piece right so it's not something you can just switch off but making sure that it doesn't impact work life balance um um and you're able to sort of switch off and take time off is something that i think i personally need to work on not sure if this is a uc white thing though got it last question uh folks uh, and then then it's a wrap you know for folks who are listening to us and wondering if they should you know consider applying to uc whether it's for the entrepreneur in residence role or any other role for that matter uh who should join urban company and equally who should not join a company so you know sort of what are the you know what are some of the things that urban company can deliver what are the expectations that they can deliver and what is the type of individual with what expectations who you know honestly should not join you see like we will not be able to deliver on those expectations so so let's go around uh, around the room and 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 hear your thoughts starting with you arushi i think if if creating impact is what excites you like basically you just want to uh do a you know work hard and really see your uh, work translate into impact on the customer side and the partner side then that this is the role uh, for you right it's about it's all about just uh keep thinking about how to make it better for customers and for partners and just keep at it and keep improving your offering uh if that excites you this is this role is for you i think the counter to this is it's not it will have a lot of ambiguity so you'll have to be okay with ambiguity you'll have to be very fast paced it's not a role where you know there will be a path for the next 5 months okay you do this then you do this it will continuously keep changing the story changes every 2 months every 3 months you have to be okay with changing priorities um with changing your mindset sometimes you will be thinking short term sometimes you will be thinking medium long term so hence i think people looking for a more structured role uh which is also more strategic I, this one may may not really be for you this will always be ambiguous will keep changing all the time and you'll have to get your hands dirty go on ground be okay to do whatever it takes to create that impact um i think th- th- those would be the two points so a lot of startups you know these days they're saying oh work from anywhere relax you know don't take stress 9 to 5 any of those things apply no i i, I don't I, i you know now if you remember like the chance we got to come back to office all of us were back in office uh, and you know even before us our city teams were back in office like people on the ground they just couldn't wait to get back because that's where the real work happens uh, and i i don't think we can kind of operate in that environment uh, on the same look there is flexibility you know you can work from home if you want all of that like we we're, we're hybrid but at the end of the day you know this is not like a 40 hour 9 to 5 kind of job right like this is one that basically like it you have time off you you do have time for your personal life and your priorities but um it can be a bit intense so you know you don't want to sign up for it if if you want one easy yeah absolutely yes got it okay uh, asa who should join who should not join yeah i think one if you are super kicked and if you are very curious about problem statements right because there is no definitive framework to any answer like you can't find pmf of a category by operating within a framework um i think it is you have to be curious to you know constantly read kind of 
you know like a random idea will kind of strike you from anywhere right so i think uh not the traditional problem solving in that sense where it's like hey let me just apply like a framework but you like problems complex challenging problems generally excite you um uh, and you're very curious to kind of solve it um in a very real way in that sense right um uh, so i think that for me is the kind of person who should join you see if you like to have a framework um that you know will kind of solve all your problem and you know kind of make just slides and excels then i think this might not be um uh, the right role for you right because beyond thinking of that idea we kind of work to make it real right or kind of make it happen so if you want to have like a fancy kind of office life just sitting in like ac and all of that and like kind of not go on ground or kind of really uh, get real in that sense uh, and be kind of comfortable with slides and powerpoint i don't think um this is the right road for you in that sense para have you been making yeah. lot of powerpoint since joining uc or something i've like? made one and that for me was unreal right i'm like oh my god i'm actually doing you know a lot more work on excel and 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 see, like seeing impact the next day so for me that was sort of really unreal i i yeah anyway so i think um for me if you are obsessed with uh, impact creation that is a no brainer you will see that here from day one um and the second would be if you sort of other person who gets the adrenaline rush from sort of being challenged there is no shortage of that here you will be challenged every day either to improve quality or to do things quicker so that you get to your goal um so that's something that you will always have at uc um so for people who i think i tying back to what arushi and aftab have already said right want a very traditional 9 to 5 job and and are okay with a very set path and have clarity then those are the people who probably shouldn't apply um people who are obsessed with creating impact and being challenged and making sure work gets done i think this role is exactly for them thank you so much all three of you i think it's been a fascinating conversation i i'm hoping that uh, our listeners have uh, have learned a lot about you know work at urban company life at urban company um and who should really think about joining us uh thanks a lot for taking time out to talk to me this morning uh and it's a wrap cheers have a good day